Hi everybody, this is Rhys Barber from Audiology Associates. Thank you very much for watching our EOAX removal video today. You can see this uh, lovely lady's come through to clear very blocked up ears on both sides. So we've got the standard size on the tube in here now. Uh, you can see the front end of the wax looks nice and soft. Uh, that's where drops have been used just to soften this up a little bit. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of olive oil has gone in here. You can see a lot of the softer material getting sucked inside the machine here. So we're just wiggling this front end just to break this away. There we go. You can see that whole front section of the wax there has come away. See a little bit of white material there to the right hand side of that block of wax is a little bit of uh, little bit of dry skin which I'll explain a bit further in a, in a second. Um, what you also see is this little white patch in the middle, this is actually Q-tip debris, so um, where the patient's been using Q-tips to clean their ears, a little bit of the cotton's come off the end there and just embedded into the wax. You'll see a little bit to the right hand side as well. Uh, so we're just trying to get a grip on this next section. Much drier type wax then just behind that front end where the drops haven't actually quite managed to reach. So you can see we're lifting, trying to unstick it as best we can, uh, but it's very sticky wax around the outside edge, so a very tacky type, uh, type feel to it. Really just trying to loosen as much of this as we can. Now this wax is really, really stubborn. It's not wanting to move easily. Um, I'll explain that a little bit further on in the video. But you can see we're just trying to pull it off this left canal wall at the moment. You can see the different nature to it. See how much more dry and crumbly this edge is as we pull it across here. So we should be getting a good grip and you can see there's a lot of good movement to the wax there. We're getting this really kind of good backwards and forwards movement. <clears throat> Excuse me. But you'll see here at the top, um, how the wax is really stubborn. It's sort of holding itself in really, really firmly. So if we just get a grip on that piece there, look how that's moving back and forth. It's really kind of just rocking back and forth. So we're gonna introduce a little bit of olive oil in here just to work it down the sides of this wax because if it is quite sticky and that's what's holding this in, then the olive oil will form a barrier between the wax and the canal wall, which will allow it to slide across the skin and reduce it and uh, reduce the uh, likelihood of it sticking against the canal wall again. So you can see we get a, a little bit more movement here. Now, what you can see here to the top left is actually a layer of dry skin. It wasn't really visible at the start, but this is dried into the wax. So what's happened is it's formed a little sleeve all the way around the canal and dried into the back end of the wax, which is why when I'm pulling it from the front, it's not really moving. And this section we can see in the top right corner here, that's another uh, sleeve that's come right the way down the canal. So it's holding at the back with this dry skin and the top right corner here, which explains why when we're holding onto this wax and wiggling it back and forth that it, it's moving but it's not really coming down the canal at all so the suction is not really holding onto it tight enough you can see all the dry skin layers at the top there so the Jobson horn is going to go in now uh, Jobson horn is this curved spoon you can see here which we use to to sort of pull down uh, bigger pieces and harder pieces of wax here so as we brought it down we've actually flicked the front end of the wax over and as we push down into it, you can see a much wetter type of wax squeeze out from the sides there. And that's where the olive oil, not that the olive oil I've just introduced, but the olive oil uh, that the patient's been putting is worked down the side and softened all the underlying wax. You can see as we get the suction on here, how it's all getting pulled into the zolna tube there. Now what we've got here is one hard block of wax here. So remember I said about the sleeve of, of dry skin around the outside edge so what's happened there is it's dried the outer uh, layer of the wax there um, so you've got this kind of slightly more mushy wax in the middle and this really hard layer on the outside so that's what I'm trying to get hold of at the moment to try and be able to pull this down but that dry skin layer is really playing havoc it's really holding on to that wax really deeply so the patient did experience obviously a lot of hearing issues, understandably so with this amount of wax in the ear, but also a lot of itching in the ear canal as well, which is due to that dry skin and the movement of the wax on top of it. So because we've got this kind of hard outer layer, I'm just trying to see if, this, if the crocodile forceps will be able to hold on to it with enough force without shearing through it to be able to pull this out. But as you can see, when we clamp down on there, um, the jaws sort of clamp onto the wax, but they kind of push through it and split it. So I'm going to try the um, try the Jobson horn again, but you can see the Jobson horn is just rocking this back and forth 
Um, we haven't really got the clearance above, so I'm going to dig into the layer below and see if we can draw this forward using that harder outer layer, almost as like a sled to pull the rest of this out. Uh, you can see we squeezed out a little bit more of that softer section there. So as we go over the top here, just trying to work down this right side, you can see how that wax moved there. It was a lot harder there, so we should be able to see if we can get a good grip on the outside edge. The Jobson horn was pushing this further in, unfortunately. So as we were trying to get a grip on it, it was rocking it back. So I'm trying to use the crocodile forceps to draw this and wedge it into the canal entrance. Because if we do that, it means that we can, there's less chance of it rocking backwards when we use a different tool with it. But as you could see, the crocodile forceps couldn't hold onto it without tearing it. So we're going to go back to the uh, standard size on the tube here. Really awkward shape because it's perfectly formed to the shape of the canal. And um, you can see a little sort of white dry skin layer at the top. I'm aiming for the smoother section because we've got a better chance to get a good grip here. And I'm using that slight wiggling, that slight depression wiggling motion just to draw this down and turn the wax. Because if we can turn it to get the smoother side on the outside, or even if we can drop it far enough to get the rear end of the wax under the entrance to the canal there, it's going to be a lot easier for us to pull forwards. It's wedged there now, so you'll see the difference I mean with the jobs and horn. Now, because we've wedged it, we could just get over the top, use that harder outer layer as, as, a, a, as a fulcrum almost, and then bring this down. There we are. So we've actually managed to turn the wax through 90 degrees and then flick it on its head, so turn it 180 degrees there. You can see that plug, quite a large plug. Now, interestingly, if you look next, can you see this layer, this sleeve of dry skin all around the outside edge we were talking about here. Look as we pull this down, how it detaches from the canal wall. Really interesting case, this one, because normally dry skin will form these little lifts, but this had formed this whole section of dry skin around the outside edge, really anchoring that wax into place. You can see as we pull this down, how it all starts peeling. We get a good grip with the crocodile forceps. Watch this as it comes away now. As we pull down, it shears from the top and then draws the sides out with it. So it pulls the whole thing. Look, it's still going, still going. You can actually see the sides sliding down the canal there. There we are. So this, this uh, sleeve of dry skin was really holding everything into place there. Now, if we take a look behind that, you'll see the remnants, little bits of dry skin around the outside edge. Um, we're just going to do a little bit of tidying up now. The skin on the outside, this darker color material here, is obviously very dead skin, uh, which is going to come away really, really easily. But the skin a little bit further in looks really still quite attached to the canal wall. Um, so if you pull that, then you run the risk of a little bit of bleeding in there, which we obviously don't want to do. Because the last thing we want to do is cause the patient any discomfort, which is always the, the main focus in, in our minds when we're doing this. But watch... Uh, I know what's coming. Watch what happens on the right hand side as we start to pull this now. I do slow the video down so you can get a better view, but look how this peels. Look at that peel there. That dead top layer of skin peeling all the way around. Look, it's going all the way over the top of the canal, dropping down the left hand side as well. And it's still going. There we are. We've pulled all of that section now. It's just, I tilt my head to the side to see. So we're just drawing all of this down the canal. When we look back in then, the skin will naturally fall back into place. When you take a look now, you can't see the edges of that dry skin. So to, you know, it obviously isn't ready to come away yet. So if we manage to, if we do get on the side of that and try and peel it, we're gonna be digging into the canal wall, which is a really, really uncomfortable sensation for the patient. And we risk the bleeding there as well. Eardrum is a little bit dull, so uh, not quite sitting in its normal position there. Um, this is the, uh, someone told me obviously the patient's second ear, because obviously you've only got two ears, but this is the patient's other ear. Uh, so what you can see here is we're just gonna, uh, same sort of issue, so we're just gonna use the standard size on the tube here, first of all. And as we lift, it's almost identical to the first ear. You've got this free moving block uh, of wax here right at the entrance, which is slightly thinner than the canal, um, which we're gonna get a, a really good grip on now. But as you can see, it's it's that dry. It's just um, a little bit crumbly. So as we get a grip on it and start to move it, little bits start crumbling away off the edge of the, of the wax there. There we go. It's coming away really nicely. 
There we are. So we've got that front section away. We can see there's a much deeper rear section in here as well. Um, looks like it's filling most of the canal. You see a very slight gap here at the top, uh, but the rest of the canal is completely covered. So if we can detach it from this right side canal wall here, but as we lift, you'll see the skin lifting. You can just see it to the bottom. There we are. You can just see it there, the bottom left, hand, bottom right hand corner, I'm sorry. As you lift it up, see the skin peel underneath? So exactly the same problem uh, with this ear that we had on the first one. We've got this layer of dry skin really holding this in place. You really am just kind of really wiggle this. Um, so the patient will feel this kind of moving in the rear canal. It won't be uncomfortable for the patient. There we are, getting a good grip on this block. I'm trying to uh, aim the, the, the end of the Zolna tube. So if you imagine that the, the front end of the wax is block is, is like this, we're trying to kind of tilt the Zolna tube to get a good grip just like that. There we are, we've got that grip now. <clears throat> Excuse me, but as we're pulling this forwards, you can see the amount of movement there, this wax should come out really, really easily. Uh, but you can see it's really holding in place. As we pull then, do you see it kind of uh, draw out and kind of stretch out of the canal. That's the skin that's embedded into all of this, uh, just just uh, uh, stopping us from pulling this out very well. There we are. It's really wiggling well. This comes with experience when you're looking at an ear canal like this. You get to know um, these things as the movement of the wax will indicate to me. Or it's it should be free. It should be coming out. If it's not coming out, then something's holding that in. So chances are there's some skin in there holding that back. Uh, which you can actually see underneath the wax there. Now, sometimes you can use that skin as almost like a little sled to be able to hold onto it and pull this, and it draws, there we are, as we're doing here now, it draws the, the wax down with it. If you're lucky, it'll stay attached. If you're unlucky, what will happen is exactly what happened there. It'll shear that skin and just take away a big chunk at the front. But it's really starting to come away. Sorry, I forgot to say at the start, if you do enjoy the videos, guys, then give us a thumbs up, and uh, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook and on YouTube and subscribe to those channels uh, if you want to. And you can see this coming away, it's looking really good there, that block's come away. Ear drum itself looking good, a little bit of oily discoloration to the top of the canal wall, but much better light reflex. And there we are, you can see what we removed there, so quite a bit, just under two inches, just under five centimeters there of, uh, of stuff that came away. Well, as always guys, take care of yourselves and one another, and I shall see you again real soon.